My daughter called to say she didn't want to complete her homework. Now, this wasn't adolescent laziness. She was disturbed by what she was being asked to do, which was pretend you are a slave who has decided to escape from Louisiana to Chicago. Go on Google Chrome and find the distance you have to travel and map an escape route for you and your family. The assignment was adapted from an online curriculum, Escape from Slavery. And the more I learned about the assignment, the more angry I became. Pretending to be an enslaved person is not an emotionally neutral experience. When I've talked with my daughter about slavery, I've tried to express the extreme human injustice and intense suffering that millions experienced. When a child is asked to be, pretend to be escaping slavery, it's not just about mapping a route. It's about the horror and terror and likely death and deep injustice. Also, it's important to appreciate how discussions of slavery are fraught for African-American students in predominantly white classrooms. We are directly related to men and women who are held in intergenerational chattel bondage in this country. Daddy, is all history different to what the teachers say? Some of it. Why do I have to learn it then? Because that's what people believe. But it's not true. It's as true as it needs to be. You understand why. To maintain order, to maintain power. Exactly. Exactly. Come on, dinner time. To watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash films. What's a depiction? A depiction is an old French word that is defined as a portrayal in picture or a representation in words, a portrait. What is also very important to note here is that by creating a portrait or a portrayal of a depiction, it does not have to be accurate. It is just meant to show a generalized likeness or an idea of something by way of imagination that is agreed upon. According to an 18th century painter and the founder of the Society of Arts, Sir Joshua Reynolds stated that, quote, in portraits, the grace, and we may add, the likeness consists more in the general air than in the exact similitude of every feature. So what does all of this have to do with the existence of slave ships? Well, that's the point. There were no official slave ships nor were there any ships created for the intended purpose to carry only slaves. These depictions that were mysteriously given to us about these ships manipulated the mind into believing that there were actual slave ships that existed, when in reality, there is no hard evidence to support this heavily campaigned theory. Look at that. This is, this is sad right here. Right here. Look at that. This some some image you probably could Google. Look at these depictions. They want you to use your imagination. 
they do. So let's use our imagination. Okay, so that's about roughly 150 people, right? I'm just gonna say that. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they put 150 people on here, right? Got about mm, 10 cans of beer. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know, Wh whatever, some water. Let's say this water, let's just say this water, right? That's gonna be enough? Somebody in the comments make this make sense, please. Please. Somebody in the comments. You got 150 people and 10 cans of beer. That, that don't sound like slavery to me. Uh-oh. They weren't in this position. They were standing up outside drinking. They they enjoying themselves on that river. Oh, wait, wait. They told you it was an ocean. My bad. Uh, we gonna get into that, though. We gonna get into that. Because, look, I'm telling you right now. Every record that I grabbed, including books, that told me they came through the Mississippi River. They came through the Nile. They came through the Mississippi River. They came through the Nile. Listen to what I just said. And they keep telling you that the Nile in Africa. Okay. Who was they? You tell me who was they. You tell who was they, Dane. You tell me who they is. These anonymous writers that created this story that you call his story, because it is his story. Is it yours? You feel so bad you want to be associated with it. Like them people out there that's claiming ADOS right now. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. American descendant of slavery, right? This is the reason why y'all can't stand me, because I'm debunking your little claim. If you, if you were a slave, I told you that meant that you were an indentured servant. That means you were a contracted employee. Indenture means contract. Servant, you doing a job, laborer. That's the slavery. <laughs> and it's still happening. Ain't nothing changed but your balls. All right, hold on now. Let me keep going. In fact, you will not find any colonial documentation that will use the term slave ship to describe their passenger ships, cargo ships, merchant vessels, or warships. This means that these stories of slave ships are contradicting themselves. I gotta stop right here. I did a, did I do, did I do a, uh, I think I did an Easter egg Sunday on this image right here. I think I did. But, ah, uh, okay. I, I just gotta say something about this image, y'all. Where the white man at? Let's start right there. Where the white man at? Somebody, anybody, where's the white man? They, 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 it's a little boy that's coming down with a man that look like he well-dressed. Both of them actually, they portrayed him as a so-called black man. He got on white gloves. What does that mean? <laughs> I, oh yeah, I think I did do an Easter egg Sunday on this because I told you what that meant. That was symbolism. And I gave you the example of uh, like when you go, for example, and the ushers will wear white gloves, passing around the offering plate. <clears throat> Make the connection. What's her name? Queen Elizabeth. Don't she wear gloves? What color are they? Huh? Who in charge right here in this picture? Was he of European royalty? Were the Europeans of color? Th this could go so many ways. And when you slow it down and pause it and really look at it and really crit critically think for a minute now, give yourself some time with images like this that they feed. Look, look at these so-called so-called slaves chained up like that 
on top of each other. How is that even realistic? And these fresh and clean people coming down the steps, what, to monitor them? Or what are they doing? Are we going to assume that they are the supervisors? Uh, they they got to be in on it some way if they working for whoever they working for or you tell me. And see, that's how the story of slavery is. It's wide open with a lot of gaps for that reason. In most cases, they want you to create your own assumption of how things went, but they just give you the uh, skeletal line or version of the story. They, once again, it goes right back to your imagination. They want you to utilize your imagination with these depictions to assist your imagination with creating the portrait, the picture, in your mind. This is about control, right here. It's about control. Let's keep it moving. Because these ships were actually wooden sailboats that did not include utilitarian motors as a convenience. These motorless sailboats were originally known as rowboats that were called skiffs dories and wherries that were chiefly propelled by the use of sails and oars for navigating the boat even through tumultuous seas, violent winds, and unexpected climate changes. Between the 1500s and the 1800s, these rowboats were used for many things like trading goods or for the transportation of goods, exploration, pirateering, and of course, immigration. But just not those stories of immigration that most of you are accustomed to hearing about. And here's what I mean by that. Look at this. Hold on. Hold on. Woo! Look at this image, y'all. Uh. Mm, mm, mm. Now, we would consider all these white folk, white folk. But <clears throat> the reason why I said it that way is because realistically, they could be different parts. They could be from different parts of Europe or even Africa and just pale skin. Now, they on the ship. And it looked like they ain't even had room to stand on a deck. And, um... I mean, what we gonna say, this 18, what? 60, 70, 80? 1900s? Keep in mind, the census started in, this, uh, in all, the year of 1790. I mean, even when it first started, it told you that the so-called free whites or they had free whites 16 and older than free whites 16 and under. There wasn't that many of them. You didn't see large masses come until they had boats, like ships like this, which you're seeing probably, this may be even a steamboat. <laughs> so the steamboat era. Now I know if you get the Googling, they're gonna tell you that the first steamboat that was commercially used was uh, only, I think it was 1807 or something like that. Now listen to me now, but it was only three people that were able to afford to build steamboats in 1807. And when you further research on, you're gonna notice that it didn't happen, I'm talking about commercially on a larger scale, where it was more than three people who owned three steamboats. Listen to that. It came later on, 1850s, 1860s, basically the late 1800s, is when they really started commercializing the use of steamboats. Now, once again, I want you guys to understand that prior to any of that, there were no motors on these ships. That's why they can't be called ships. They were boats. And I just told you, wherries, rowboats, row, row, row your boat. Come on, guys. That's not hard. 
But it's almost like people forgot <laughs> how it went. And you think you about to fit people on those boats? According to the History Channel and a whole rack of other sources, their numbers that they, they originally used was 12.5 million enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas. I can stand here and confidently say that's impossible. They said they brought 12.5 between the 1600s and the 1800s. They're alive. These white folks ain't start coming here till the time period of this picture, late 1800s. So what mass army did they have? Uh-oh. Prior to that. Huh? They tell you about all these wars and you know how they show you movies and <sighs> war movies and show you how it was all white folk when it wasn't that really, <laughs> truthfully speaking now, wasn't that many of them. So what that mean, Dane? That means that your people was fighting their own people. That's what that mean. Prove me wrong, I dare you. <laughs> I dare you. It wasn't that many white folks in these wars because it wasn't that many white folks here. Hold on, before I go any further, here they go. This. Here go the Africans right here. Here they go. Arriving. Africans, Europeans, whatever, whatever one you want to use, here they go. Right here. So we got images of them coming. <laughs> but they got paint, they got to paint pictures and engravings and watercolor pictures of you being captured from Africa. Like, come on, who was the leader? Who was the leader that, who started that? Who did it? Name some people. What war took place in Africa in order for that to happen, in order for white folks to come over there to capture Africans out the blue? What you think they was in the, oh, let's think about this for now. Let, let's think about this for a second. Foreign land, let's just say that these so-called pale faces started in Europe. Let's just say that, okay? Because I know a lot of people can twist it many different ways. But I want, I just, let's just say that for example. Now, they coming over to Africa, a landmass that they're not used to, meaning that they're not accustomed with it. They don't know how people roll. They don't know any of that. So they sent explorers, AKA spies, informants, to go mingle with them, the people that, that you know, the native or indigenous people of that landmass in Africa to be nosy and to report it back to somebody. Christopher Columbus. But hold on, wait a minute now. It was more than just Christopher Columbus that was explorers, informants, spies. So put two and two together. Would they be sending hell faces to go look at some people of color? Or would they be sending so-called people of color to go look at so-called people of color? Because if you see a pale face just standing there looking at you, complete stranger, what you gonna do? What you gonna do right now? If you walk out in your backyard and you see a complete stranger, no matter their skin complexion, what you gonna do? You gonna stand there and, oh, hey, what you gonna do? Stop, come on, stop playing. Like this ain't no if, ass, or bust about it. You gonna go get them. So you gonna act like that these Africans couldn't take care of themselves against what, one person? Oh, did they send an army? Cause it wasn't that many of them. So you know they didn't send no army. What army? And how come that's not documented? And how come these Africans that's coming over here ain't repeating the same stories? That's another problem. They tell you about immigration. Yeah, they do. But they tell you about another part of Africa, African people moving from Africa to another part of Africa. That's it. That's immigration with an E, not immigration with an I, two differences. You moving within the same landmass. That's what happened to our ancestors. We were moving throughout the same landmass. Did the Indian Removal Act force those people to go to Africa? Or 
over there in California or, or, or uh, on the West? Pick one. You you force them to go to a different continent or you force them to go to the opposite side? Think. Think. That's what this is about. And here go the white folks right here. And we can't get a picture that look like this to match this story about the transatlantic slave trade, AKA the middle passage. I'm just here to make you think.